The only thing I can't complain about at all is my sex drive. And Alexis can speak to that. There's no issue there, which is awesome. And from what I hear, it'll probably only get better. So God bless her soul. Yo, my name is Andrew Hiller, and I'm going to be jumping on hormone replacement therapy, testosterone replacement therapy. I will be doing this working with a clinic in California, California Hormones, CAHormones.com. And if you've been following along, two weeks ago, I went down there, I had my blood work drawn. I have all my results back. I'm going to talk about that at some point in here. But the first thing I got to tell you guys is that everything that I say on here is not me recommending shit. I'm not a doctor. No, I'm not your freaking doctor. I don't speak for the doctors that I've spoken to. If you're interested in getting your own headspace about this stuff, you want to get your blood work drawn, you go to cahormones.com, you click on the tab in the top right corner, you sign up for a consultation, you type in Hiller. If you're in California, you get your blood work drawn for free, which is super fucking cool because it's expensive. If you are out of California in the Newport area, you go to the website, you type in Hiller, you do the consult, you call the doctor, the doctor writes you up a script to get your blood work drawn, and then you get it done through your insurance, which is also way cheaper than if you were to just go get it done any other way. It's like a $200 value. And after you do that, you'll be at exactly the same point that I'm at right now, which is I'm sitting here. I've made the decision to go on testosterone replacement therapy along with some peptides. So the peptides I'm going to be using are CJC1295 and hypermorelin. Those are supposed to stimulate my pituitary gland to produce more growth hormone. And I'm going to be down, going down the route of optimization of my health. Some of you guys might have an opinion on that. So my testosterone levels came back. They were at 733 nanograms per deciliter. There are going to be a shitload of people out there who are going to say some stuff about, oh, that's too high. You shouldn't be jumping on that. You're 30 years old. And to those claims, I say, I can do whatever the fuck I want to do with my body. There are going to be people who say that you might regret this in the next 10 years because you can't have kids. And I'll tell them that I am certain that I don't want them. And if I ended up changing my mind by some sliver of a percentage of a chance, then I could just take some clomiphene because there's studies out there saying that if you take that fertility drug, then you can be upwards of 10 years while using a testosterone replacement therapy. And then you can still have kids as long as you kick your balls back in. There'll be people who say, do you want to really be giving yourself a couple of injections a week for the rest of your life. And it's like, well, I've bought since the age of 16, probably 3000 tubs of NO Explode because every day, first thing in the morning, I take one scoop of NO Explode. Sometimes I take two scoops of NO Explode and I have absolutely no problem with keeping myself regimented, doing something for the rest of my life. 16 to 30, I've been doing NO Explode for 14 years. I brought up in the past, if you've been following my channel, that I have an addictive personality. And by addictive personality, I mean that I have never done a heroin. I've never done cocaine. Came. I didn't have any sort of marijuana until I was 28 years old. I don't drink very much, but I can honestly say that over the course of my life, I have probably drank less than some people have had over the course of a three day weekend binger where it's like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and they're drinking, they're tailgating, they're in college, whatever. But over the course of my life, I have probably consumed less drinks than some of those individuals. It's pretty weird. And I'm pretty weird. I'm weird when it comes to things like drugs and alcohol, very much like the drinking and the marijuana. I can see that when I do something that I don't like, I ended up steering clear of it. But when I do something that I do like, like the caffeine, I just keep on doing it. I have no problem doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And I myself have thought more about this decision than anybody who has an opinion about what I do with my body can say about my 733 nanogram per deciliter level of testosterone and what might happen. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to be using 200 milligrams of testosterone cypionate injected on a Sunday and a Thursday or a Monday and a Thursday, it's supposed to be separated by about three and a half days. So it'd be Sunday night and Thursday morning, ideally at 100 milligrams. And the idea is that I'm going to bring my testosterone levels up from 733, just over a thousand, which is still within the reference range, right? I want to be at the top of the reference range. I am trying to optimize myself as a human being. And where does this all come from? Many of you guys know me from the past, what, five or six months. But for those of you who have known me over the course of my life, Alexis is a good example. I met Alexis in 2015. 
2015, and I had every intention of going to the CrossFit Games. I'm literally taking myself out of the competition by doing this. By taking these drugs, I will not be able to sign up for the Open. I will not be able to sign up for local competitions and feel right about it. But I am going to be documenting everything to give everybody a better headspace. I put up the video yesterday about the baseball bet. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Cheat first, cheat hard, no mercy. All I want to do is give everybody a bigger insight. That includes myself. This will give me the ultimate insight into the world of performance enhancing drugs. What do you feel like here? Everything I said was anecdotal. So I talked to somebody, they give me their experience. Now I will have the input. I will have the output. I'm going to be able to tell everybody what it's like. I can read all the studies in the world that I want, but I'm going to be the experiment and I can do that. And I could be doing a mukbang challenge. For those of you who don't know what it is, I could be throwing down tens of thousands of calories at once and be like, okay, how do you think that that looked? That's very cool to look at, right? Everyone watches people eat like McDonald's every item on the menu and that's cool to look at. Well, I think it's going to be cool to look at the first CrossFitter to ever openly talk about their hormone usages. So I already told you, it's going to be 200 milligrams a week. I'm going to get my bloods redrawn in a month's time. And then a month after that, I'm working very closely along with the clinic. I'm going to be doing that while also using the CJC1295 and the Ipamorelin. And the big thing I brought up about the history of myself is that 2015, 16, 17, I want to go to the freaking CrossFit Games. And if you were to ask me, that's when I was at like peak shape. Andrew was the best version of himself. He was ready to roll. He wanted to get into the gym. He wanted to kick ass. He slept like a fucking rock. If he was allowed to sleep for 12 hours, he would sleep for 14 hours. And right before the 2017 Open, I got mono. I remember I had to do that dumbbell snatch burpee box jump over workout and I had to do it over like 10 times because I was just like, where's my fifth gear? I don't have a fifth gear. I put up, put up a post on my Instagram, which is really weird. Put, and I've always been a weird dude. But what I do remember is that I wasn't the only person who got mono back then. There was another athlete who I believe spoke about getting mono and that athlete never got back to where they were. And I also think that I never got back to where I was because I never felt like I ever had that fifth gear again. And that's okay. Maybe that's the part where I'm the former bitter level regional athlete and the mono took me out. But I am now a 30 year old dude and here are my options. Andrew, you can try every ounce that you've got to try to get to the CrossFit Games and do it the way you're supposed to do it. You're going to look back on your life and know that you did the whole thing. But I'm more regretful of the option that I'm not going to, as a 30-year-old athlete with a body that is perfectly healthy, put myself through something that I thought would be a very cool science experiment. Because this is something that I can only do right now when I'm 30. If I'm 35, this body will be five years older. And then I can do everything, but I'm not going to be able to peak out my potential. Let's say I could run a five minute mile, but my body is only capable of doing it as a 30 year old. As a 35 year old, there's no five minute mile in there anymore. You can take all the drugs in the world that you want. And you're not going to be able to put this piece of meat through the ringer to do a five minute mile along with a 300 pound snatch, along with a 400 pound clean and jerk. I'm not saying those are my goals, but they're top end, super awesome fucking things that are only capable to be done, in my opinion, while I am at the age that I'm at and the window is closing. It's been closing for a little bit of time now and I'm actually super super grateful that California Hormones reached out and said, hey, do you want to do this thing with us? The route that they always put people through is the route of optimal health. And that's going to be the thing that people are kind of going to get stuck on a little bit here is that you are very healthy. And for 99% of people, I would say, yeah, the only way that you should be doing this is that if you want to be optimizing your health, let's say that you have a testosterone level of 300 or 400 and you're a male and you want to be up to 700 like I am, or you want to be up to a thousand like I'm shooting for. The goal is to feel better better every single day. The same thing goes for females. This isn't just a male thing. So females can get like a cream or they can get the pellets put in or they can take very low dose injections because females can also be diagnosed with low testosterone, low estrogen and California hormones can also do female hormones. So this isn't just a male thing. But on top of the fact that I had the mono and I felt like I never got that fifth year back, the other thing that I have recently been going through is that I have the YouTube channel and I am obsessed beyond all means with the YouTube channel. I love making the videos. I'm obsessed with the editing. It's cool. It's fun for me. But really the only times that I've had to do it, I mean, right now it's freaking, it's a good time for me. It's 1030 in the AM and I've got a client coming in in the next hour and I'm stressing about getting all of this done before the rampage of clients that I have come in. But typically I'm up very late doing this. It is actually my hope that through the hormone replacement therapy, I'm optimizing myself so that I am able to do the YouTube channel better. I'm able to work out better when I do work out. I remember during the quarterfinals when I 
busted out my elbow. I was in such a weird mental space about that that I ended up just pulling like three all-nighters in a row, making videos, just like blasted them out. I would stay up all night and have clients all day. I bet, I bet if I were to get my blood work done then, it would have been much, much lower than 700. I've been trying to take much better care of myself. And I think that it shows that I've been taking better care of myself. And that's the goal. And I'm going to keep everybody updated on that. And if we're going to be entirely honest about everything, I turn on the camera and I've said it before, you have 100% Andrew Hiller. He's ready to rock and roll. Generally, I'm feeling pretty good about everything, but I think because I've ha I have such high highs on the YouTube channel that I also have some kind of low lows. And I would like to do everything I can to get rid of those low lows. I'd like to feel better when I wake up in the morning. The only thing I can't complain about at all is my sex drive. And Alexis can speak to that. There's no issue there, which is awesome. And from what I hear, it'll probably only get better. So God bless her soul. So just a quick recap, got my blood work done in Newport. Testosterone levels were 733. I want them to be upwards of 1100 nanograms per deciliter. I'm doing it and I am no longer going to be competing in the CrossFit Open. I will be doing the CrossFit Open. I'm going to be training to become the best version of myself. I'm going to try to put myself in as many beneficial situations as possible to get as fit as I have ever been. I'm going to be documenting all of that shit. I have also not stated yet that I am in the worst shape that I've been in. Maybe not the worst shape, but if the best shape ever, I was 100 out of 100. Right now, I would bet to say that I'm like a 68 out of 100. For example, there was the quarterfinal workout in 2021. I believe that there were 180, it was 60, 50, 40 GHD sit-ups. It was over 150 GHD sit-ups. And I remember I did that thing twice and I wasn't sore, but the other day I did 75 GHD sit-ups, broke it up into five sets of 15. And I think I gave myself rhabdo. I was sore for a week. I couldn't stand up all the way. I only have myself to blame because all I do is make YouTube videos and train my clients, but I'm going to be prioritizing the shit out of my training. I want to see how fit I can get, how quick I can get back to where I was at. And number three, I just want to feel better about everything because while I do feel good a lot of the time, for as good as I feel sometimes, I also feel about as bad during other times. It'll be cool for you guys to follow along with the journey. If you're interested in checking out your own shit, cahormones.com, use the code HILLER. I got nothing else. Andrew Hiller, out. <laughs>